And we are back. Dollar Radio. If anyone's just tuning in, like I said, this is Dollar Radio, hosted by Dollar Entertainment's own B-Side Behind the Boards. We decided to hack the core. Actually, it's not much of a hack, and I'm going to tell you why. It's a ha- it's, it, it's not much of a hack because they actually encourage subbing in for automation. They like as much human programming as possible. So shout-outs to the core. Shout-outs to their policy on uh, letting DJs come on and, and sub in for automation. I could do fun shows on the fly like so, you feel me? Because Seven just dropped this project Thursday night, technically. Yeah. Um, so, you feel me? So, we got that going on. So, let's talk about it, Seven. Uh, where are you from? I'm um, from Franklin, New Jersey, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. Now, are you born and raised? Yeah, small town in Somerset. Okay, okay. Actually, now it's pretty big. I mean, it depends on what you live at. You can live in the boonies, you can live in the city, you can live close to the Brunswick, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a whole lot of everything. You got cow crossings, it's weird. Okay, well, then let's talk about your music background. So, what's like your first memory of music? Like, where where did where did the music come from? I uh, my first memory of music probably had to be back in the days, just running around the crib, hearing the house music playing. Just remember seeing my mom and my dad dancing to it in the little two step. You know what I mean? Just a little song. Okay, okay. Uh, do you have any personal childhood favorites that uh, remind you of anything? For example, like I don't know. When I was a kid, obviously I was like in the '90s era. I remember the times where like we had. Biggie, Pac, like, you know, I didn't, obviously, you know, I'm Latino, so I remember, like, Selena. Any, anything stick out to you when you was young? I feel you. Um, I really didn't get into, like, the genre of music I'm in until late in the game, so to me, what I remember from me actually taking anything away from music would be, like, Lil Wayne, you know what I'm saying, like, Jay-Z when he was, you feel me, earlier, you know what I'm saying, like, things like that is not really, you know, like, actual people I listen to. Okay, okay, and when did you actually start, like, uh, writing music? I started writing music my freshman year, cause I I'm not even going to cap. It was somebody in my school. It, I had just left Franklin, so okay. I got kicked out of Franklin. So um, it was somebody in my school that was making music, and he was getting mad cloud or whatever like that. So I decided, I right, well, I'm going through a lot. I want to find a way to express it. You know what I'm saying? If it's working for him, maybe it'll work for me. And I took it and ran with it. That's a good way to go about it. Now, when you say you was going through a lot, does that uh, ever go into the music? Yeah, it, it definitely does. Right, because some people, cause what, what I mean by that, some people that's listening right now would, would be like, well, that was a no-brainer by what you just said. But some people actually, when they go through a lot, they'll use the energy, but they won't channel essentially what happened. You feel me? Like, let's say if a kid went through, like, I don't know, the death of a brother or something like that, they just might channel that into, like, some angry music or sad music, not necessarily talk about that their brother dying you feel me yeah, so really. do you feel like you're in both categories or you're kind of like in 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 one more one or more the other like do you draw on more on life experiences or is it or is it more so on the energy of of how you feel and of what uh, happens to you throughout life i feel so i draw on a little bit of both because the way i like to make my music is if an experience happens to me and i feel like i need to get it out in some way um i'll write a song about it and i'll tell the story i'll tell exactly what happened to me in the way that you feel me? We'll fit the beat and fit everything that I'm trying to do. And then along with that, I'll have that extra, you know what I mean? That extra rage, that extra feeling, that extra emotion within the song. Okay, okay, okay. So how did you actually get involved with uh, recording music? So, like, did you hit up a studio before? Was Loft your first studio? Or, like, what was the process of that? Um, so my first studio was actually, shout out to my boy JPK. Um, it was at his house in Flemington. Um, that was the artist I was talking about. Was All the way in Flemington? In yeah, man, in Flemington. Like, That's a trip, time. bro. Yeah. Yeesh. All right. Okay, so you was, you, was, you was in there making music like that. Now, like, what was it what, what was it like back then compared to what it's like uh, now making music? Back then, it was just, I don't know. Back then, I was making music more so for people to notice me. I wasn't really making it for a reason. I wasn't trying to reach anybody. I was just... Hopping on whatever wave was there, you know what I mean? Like, if it was hype music, I was on a hype music wave. If it was sad, depressed music, I was doing that. It's just, I was there. And how old were you when you started recording? Um, 15, 16. How old are you now? 18. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. That's right. Uh, okay. That explains why you're driving now and stuff. Okay. <laughs> now, when did you actually start uh, writing music? I know people obviously start writing before they start recording. Uh, not everyone, but... Definitely. Um, I started writing music actually when I was in seventh grade. 
just it started off as like poetry, or like little short rhymes, because I always used to like to write. I don't know why. Like I write my name at times in cursive on a piece of paper. I just like the. Oh, way you know it, how to write in cursive? Yeah, like I just like the yeah. way it looks. Yeah, me like, too. I was actually one of the few kids, um, cause we we had this one teacher, man. I forget her name. I think her name was Miss Haynes. Yeah, 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 in fourth grade, and she like forced us all to write. Like we learned how to write in cursive since like third grade, but like this fourth grade teacher like forced us to write in cursive, and like after that. Yeah, I remember, like, we were just, like, you know, you could do whatever you wanted. Oh, we got a caller. All right, well, we got a caller. Um, I'm not going to answer that yet. I'm sorry. We're going to have to see. People could text me, where can I track this down? Someone just said, Sam Allegro said, where can I track this down? Well, Seven, while, while, we're, while we're on air, I guess you could let listeners know where they can find your music. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, what, let them know. I don't know. I got a text message. Let them know where they can right, find well, your music real quick. You can find my quick. music on SoundCloud, man. My EP just released on SoundCloud right now. Um, just search up Seven to Ghost on there and get lit, man. Come vibe with me. Right. Now, let me not get ADHD by the... You can see there's like a red siren in here that's like... I don't know where the yeah. music at. I don't know where the music at. Yeah, I know. He want to know where the music at, so we're just letting our listeners know what the vibe is. So, shout out to Sam Allegro. You know who Sam Allegro is, by the way? Oh, we got a random listener. I be telling people we lit, bro. The signal be pretty big. Let's 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 refocus back in the interview because I was liking where the flow was going. So you used to write, used to enjoy how, how how it looked like. Yeah, man, my favorite thing about it is because I was I, w- I would use hip hop as an outlet to like learn English. What I used to love about the genre was just like how beautiful each word sounded next to each other. Like when you had like Nas or Jay, I know you mentioned Jay before. We were just flowing. It was just you know what I mean. It was just like one big uh, you know a uh, 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 piece of just art. You know what I mean. So. Okay, so you really so you still know how to write in cursive? Yeah, I do. Righty or lefty? Um, I'm not ambidextrous. I'm only righty, man. Okay, Can't that's fine. Right. Cause I know too many left-handed people. I'm like, I thought it was only ten percent. You feel me? Yeah, nah. So what's your writing process like now that we're like there? I mean, we touched on it a little bit about the whole life experiences, but like, you know, what 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 gets you going to 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 write a song first? I guess. Well, what gets me going to write a song is anything that really happens to me. Like if something, I don't want to use the word traumatizing because that's, that's wrong, but something like extravagant, like it has to be very like, very memorable for me to want to make a mute, like a song about it, you feel me? So say I'm out on a walk and something basic happens, I'm not going to make a song about that, you feel me? Like it has to be like some life changing, like some real recognition, like I don't know, you feel, you feel what I'm trying to say? No, I feel you 100%, I feel that 100% trust. Um... I guess let's take a little break. We did have a little eight minutes on air straight, and I can see who 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 who's been hitting us. Like I said, folks, stay tuned, everybody. Tonight we gonna keep it live on and popping with seven, and yeah, I'm glad people is tuning in. Like I said, Dollar Nair Radio hosted by Dollar Nair Entertainment's own B side behind the boards, and we got my guy seven in air, man. Let's get it. And we're back, Dollar Nair Radio hosted by Dollar Nair Entertainment's own B side. Behind the boards, yeah, I just heard a wonderful PSA. I played a couple of tracks just to keep setting the vibe on and popping. So, let's continue it back. So now we're kind of, you know, trekking uh, across the journey of Seven as an artist, Seven as a person. I see both are kind of very intertwined and interconnected. Some people like to keep it separate. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad we kind of got to distinguish where your mind is at in terms of that artistic process. So how did you get involved with CHP? How did that all uh, come about? All right, well, when I moved back out to Franklin originally, after I came back from Flemington, um, my man's G-Man, you feel me? I was looking for a studio to record at, you feel me, to take my music more seriously and stuff like that. So he had um, he had hooked me up with my manager, Capo. And shout out to Capo, you feel me? He's also my, he's also my engineer. He does a lot for me, you feel me? He's the reason my, my EP sounds the way it does. <laughs> it sounds lit? Thank you. But um yeah, he had introduced me to Capo and he had recorded me. He had recorded my first session, and ever since then it's just, it's just taken it's off, history. man. Andy. Yeah, it's uh it's um Capo 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 really developed as an engineer from what I've seen, and uh, his has he did he produce anything from the project? I don't really um, take a look. Yeah, at the song Paper with me and Hooligan and you on it. T Roy, how about your project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I had to get the Hula Gang on there. Yeah, you had to get the. It's always a vibe when Hula Gang get on the track. Yeah, I remember, funny. I remember the session when we had him uh, collaborate with Mr. Dollar there. That was a lit one, and we had the video. 
We had a nice little step dance to it, but it wasn't really featured too much in the video, but it's cool. I'm going to keep that dance alive. But anyway, <laughs> um, let's talk about, like, things outside of you, and but but your thoughts on things, you know what I mean? Like, uh, how you feel about hip-hop in Jersey? You got any thoughts on that? Honestly, I feel like the hip-hop scene in Jersey, it, it could be a lot more, like, I don't know, see, I was watching Hip Hop Evolution with my manager, and I didn't realize how into the music scene Jersey was at first, you yeah, know you what I mean? saw that, right? Yeah, so now it's like, all right, seeing where we came from to what's going on right now, it's like, all right, how do we go from trying to help everybody you feel me? Get out and becoming like one of the main founders of it to not going anywhere, not helping anybody, everybody for themselves. Like I, I just don't understand what's going on right now. What I see is that. Yeah. What you, what you got? Something? Hey, well, introduce yourself too. <laughs> my bad. You know, I'm, I'm a quiet person. I'm not used to this. My name is Deontay. My rapper name is D underscore Throne. You can hit me up whenever you know on SoundCloud. But yeah, I'm Tyler's best friend. I've known him for years. And if you see him, you're going to see me. And that's just how it's going to be. <laughs> Facts. We're going to get a little bit into more in y'all friendship. Uh, let's um, center back in. Okay, so what I'm thinking is what happened was basically I think New York kind of just ended up capitalizing on the fact that they have just the finances there. You feel me? To like have a radio station like Hot 97. Because to the best of my knowledge, I know Kiss FM was actually a big radio station before Hot 97. Yeah. You feel me? So I know that was the thing. Um, what are some of the things that you feel Jersey could do better with in terms of like trying to get it together? I feel like there needs to be a lot more collaboration because even on Instagram, I see simple things like it'll be, you feel me, one showcase over here and then another showcase over here and they'll be in towns right next to each other. Okay, so instead of doing that, why not hit each other up, collab on a bigger showcase, get that showcase popping, you feel me? You have more people in there, more people doing this, more people doing that. It's just the all together. You feel me? Like it just. So you're you're into you're like, into the idea of like centralizing stuff. Yeah. How you gonna get anywhere if you don't help each I other mean, out? Like I feel like New York also has that though. I feel like New York, it, the whole beauty of New York is like there's a there's there's an event going on on every corner. That's Fendi. That's why they winning right now. Right. So I mean, I get. I I see. I see your point. I feel like we should learn to collab first before we can work on our own. Right. That's true. That's true. Cause even even myself, like I was I was hesitant to have coworkers, and then once I finally got coworkers, I was like, yeah, this is this is the wave. It's just, I guess it's always cool to just like you know have people to speak to on things, just so you know you're not going through it alone. And I feel like everyone goes through that from the event planners and the promoters. Cause that's the thing. I, I you know when I speak to people who left Jersey, people are actually saying, uh, that's the best move you can make. Do you see yourself leaving Jersey to further your music career? Um. Me personally, no, but I'm only going to say no because of the people I have around me. I feel like I need to stay exactly where I'm at. I feel like the people around me are going to build me to be the best person I can be. You feel me? Like, I feel like if I were to leave, I would. It, it would just be something missing. It's just something nostalgic about having people support you and, you feel me, want you to be the best you can be. Like, it's just something amazing about that. Okay, okay, okay. So, who are some of your biggest inspirations as an artist? Some of my biggest inspirations as an artist... Um, I mean, besides, like, people I listen to, like, their music, like, bigger artists, I don't really have any, like, Uzi, that's one, that's probably the only one. I heard you went crazy when Uzi played, uh, <laughs> right before, it was either right before or after, um, after, during my show, uh, and then I played, uh, Moving on Doves. Yeah. Is that is that is that a fact or cap? Nah, that's that's a fact. That's, that's a, fact. a fact. I need to make that a segment, yo, I need to make that a segment, fact or cap, alright, bet. I'm gonna keep that in my back notes. That's cool. That's cool. So let's talk about what was. So is that is that similar to like what was on your playlist during this process? Because like I know, every every semester when I was at Rutgers, I used to have like just like a, a solidified playlist. You know what I mean? When I'd like be going through midterms or finals, and what I realized is a lot of the process of like when you're working on a paper is kind of. I mean, paper. Yeah. Well, I'm still in college mode. Don't mind me. Um, when you're working on a project, it's kind of the same thing. Like you got like just a consistent playlist. Is that playlist basically the same? Uh, of like the same people that inspire you or do you switch it up to like current music like what was you listening to while you was uh preparing to to, to make the project it's so funny that you said uzi because mainly uzi i was just trying to capture it's that hard though because he does. right it's hard though because uzi hasn't dropped anything as of late so you listen to right. old uzi basically yeah i was listening to 2016 2017 like throwback uzi just trying to capture that energy like how he how he makes you feel like you're with him in the song you know what i mean how it like for me uzi gets my heart racing you feel me like it's 
you know what I mean? Like, I just feel it. I feel the song. I feel like I'm there. I feel everything he's saying type. I, I can't really explain it. It's just I want to capture that and okay. put it in my music. You're doing a good job. I think you're doing a good job about Thank that. You. And I think, um, all right, cool. Now, speaking of friends, um, luckily your friends are not dead like Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> you got one sitting next to you. So let's talk about y'all two real quick. So when did y'all first meet? Obviously, you brought him in here for a reason. Well, I was doing my little thing in Jersey, you know. I was doing my stuff in Franklin. And we met because I was just going through some stuff, you know, that I don't really feel like talking about on the radio. And Get a game. Uh, the first thing we did was we linked. I went to his crib, and we went down to this spot that we usually go to. Shows like it's like a real nice big open field, you know. And the rest is history, you know. That's when we became best friends. Every single day, we would go in the bathroom, you know, make music, rap, every day, every night, you know. We always had a, we always had a dream of being a rapper, and he did it first, and to be honest, I look up to him because, you know, that's my brother, you know, he's doing his thing, and I started rapping, I'm doing my thing, and I'm just blessed to be on his mixtape. It's basically how we met, and that's how we always want to be friends to the end. So, now, in talking about the friend dynamic, do you feel like that helps, uh... Uh, what do you think about the process of being friends? Do you think that it helps with yeah, uh, making music together? Like, I feel like I articulated that question kind of terribly. So what I'm basically trying to say is what part of your friendship helps y'all make music the best? Like, it's, it's just like is it a competitive vibe? Is it it's like a even, friendly competitive it's vibe? Not even, or like, yeah, it's not even really that, to be honest with you. We never really compete with each other. We grow off of each other. And that's what people don't understand. When you wanna when you wanna grow with a friend, you don't compete with them. You be their stepping stone. You be their you know their crutch. So they're your crutch. You're their crutch. And it just works like a ladder. You understand what I mean? And that's why he's growing. How he's growing. That's how I'm growing. How I'm growing. And that's basically what we're doing. And we don't compete with nothing. You know? I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I like two that. Different vibes. I like that's that. How it is. Okay. 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 Let's see what I got on my playlist, cause um. It would be nice to get some more. Oh, there you go. Close the door. Hey. Oh. Mr. Capo in the building. Yeah, we got Capo in the and building. And we got Capo in the building. Now yeah, we can. Actually, Capo, why don't you sit down? Because you as a manager, I feel like I could ask you some dope questions, too. Based on seven. There we go. Look at that. See, now it actually feels like the Breakfast Club. And I'm going to tell you what. The thing I like about the Breakfast Club, personally, is that their, their program is not as polished and curated. You feel me? Like, people will walk in mid-interview, and they'll just, you know what I mean? They'll just get it popping. You know what I mean? Like the Birdman thing. So now that we got Capo in the building. Capo, what's goody? What's good, man? What's good, bro, bro? You know the vibes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now now, now we lead it. So this is an interesting conversation, too, because now you have engineer and artist. Now, as a personal engineer, I like to discuss the psyche between the chemistry of the two. So what was it like working on Seven's project? Um, what's it called? I enjoyed it very much, you feel me? Um, like, him as an artist, he got, like, a lot of different styles and whatnot. So, like, hearing actually, like, what he, like, went through as an artist and whatnot and, like, stuff to, like, actually make him make his songs is actually cool. Any, like, fr any frustrating moments? Any frustrating songs? And not even <laughs> frustrating, like, y'all arguing with each other. Just, like, you can, I mean, you know, when I work with artists, like, It'd be like sometimes they really can't work on that part, and y'all just remember that part. Like when I shout out my guy Face, Free Face, all the way in the box, you know the vibes. Um, there was one song, yeah, there was one song that I just remember vividly that we could just not get it together. Nah, you what's know? it called? It was a couple of songs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how you come in. It was. Oh no. <laughs> I to told you, the exposure. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, I don't know how he was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> trying to sing with no voice. Man, listen, yeah. there was no tune on there, man. I was trying to get that auto-tune busting. Oh, yeah. It's always fun working with auto-tuned artists, especially the ones that actually got a good voice. Now, you got a solid voice and stuff like that. Okay, okay, okay. What was your, uh... I I'm sure you appreciate Capo's patience. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's shaking his head, yeah. Word, word, word. So, how, how, that's actually good because you was actually just talking, we were just talking about how you two got involved with each other. So, we could, we could, we could keep that conversation going. So, Cap, 
tell your side of the story of how you discovered him and how you. Yeah, that's right. I gotta look pretty too. Um, how you how how, how you discovered Seven and how that relationship grew throughout. Um, what's it called, bro? Well, like, um, my little brothers and whatnot, like, they've been hanging around Seven and whatnot, you feel me? So, like, when I used to be going to their house, I always would see him and whatnot. And then, like, years went past, like, two years went past, and my little bro, G-Man, like, he was managing him at first, <clears throat> and, like, he brought him to the studio, and, like, he did a couple of beat room sessions, and then it was, like, what's it called? Long story, like, sure, I had to start managing and whatnot. Those things didn't go right, I guess. Okay. Yo, Cap, you definitely wouldn't be a good rapper, my boy. <laughs> you talking the mic, my boy. Oh, my bad. <laughs> now, you good. We heard you clearly. I'm just I'm, I'm just busting you real quick, bro, bro, my bad. Um, okay. Yeah, we delved in a lot. We exposed Seven for a little bit. Not me. Every artist. What was your What was your favorite song that you got to make? Uh, let's start with that. What was your favorite song you got to make? Ever, like, in my lifetime. No. Oh. We can do both. Why not? Uh, yeah, cause you just dropped this project, and is this the first project you ever dropped? Uh, it's kind of. Yeah, it's the first professional one. I'll okay. See. All right, best. So we'll just pretend this is like the first. So yeah, first best song, favorite song you made ever first. All right, the favorite song I made ever probably had to be this song from way back in the day called Money Bag, only because I remember it was popping because Cardi Cardi B had just came out with a song. You know that song Money Bag, right? Yeah, she came out yeah, that yeah. money bag, money bag, money bag. And I had came up with a song with the same thing, you feel me? So basically, I flipped it. And then I made it for, like, the dudes, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it was just <laughs> mad lit. Like, it was mad lit. Like, and I remember, I remember I had my first show or whatever. And I played that song first. And people hopped on the stage, started dancing. Like, I had people from my school get on the stage and start dancing with me. It was mad lit, man. Okay, okay. You probably had to be the best one. And what was your favorite song working on this project? Um, probably my, Nirvana, right? Yeah, my favorite song, it had to either be Nirvana or that song, Energy, my man's D-Thone, because, you know, you feel me, he's not local, so when he come up, it's always a situation, you know what I mean? That's right, he's here from Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. Shout out D-Thone, I know you out in the lobby right now. Andy. D-Thone. Anyway, um, and now, what was your least favorite song to work on in the tape? Now, you'd be surprised, sometimes it'd be your least favorite, because people really, like, love the track so much, they'd be perfectionist. That's why I always ask people that. Sometimes it's the same. It's the same answer, but I'm gonna just let that question rock with you. Okay, um, what you what you think? Nirvana. Nirvana. Yo, I yo, <laughs> yo. have a love hate oh, relationship man. with that song, huh? So it's like, recording it, it's like, I don't, I don't know. So. <laughs> like, My vibe is blown. Like, he says you loved it and like. You Hated her at the same time because he couldn't get what he needed right. I heard to the point where y'all had y'all had me missing the plays. I come back from Ecuador, I'm playing at Capo like, yo son, that was that was not it. And I'm like, <laughs> I love you guys too, bro. Why not? Okay, yeah. Oh, it's uh, top of the hour, so let's take a 24 second quick break. So now that we back on air, on and popping, let's keep talking. See what I did there? All right, cool. Um, seven. Sure. About the project, uh, what was it like just, you know, uh, making the project? Like, where did the project come from? You know what I mean? Like, what finally was just like, okay, let me make, like, a a, a composed work of, of art? I, um, so basically, where the project came from was I was just going through it. You know what I mean? Just I, I have this tendency to be in my own head a lot and overthink things, and I, I tend to overreact to certain situations. You know what I mean? So... I have finally had enough of the people around me, the things that were going on around me, the situations I was finding myself in, and I just basically was like, all right, it's either going to be me, myself, and I, or I'm going to fall in the sink, you know what I mean? So take it personal. Like, that's how I'm coming. Take that's, it personal. That's where you got the title from? Yeah. Okay. Like, I'm about to bust up. I'm about to do my thing. Left behind, take I can agree. You just turned 18, though, too, right? Yeah, man. I remember that day. Interesting times, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, speaking of being 18, how does it feel like being actually, like, one of the youngest people in the game right now? At least at least with the amount of stuff that you're armed with. Obviously, you're at Loft. Uh, you're being managed by CHP, which is known, um, you know, for the Albie Allen friends and who run it. Uh, who really run it, Volume 2, uh, Volume 1, Volume 2 on the way, we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, so you're pretty, like, you're pretty armed, like, you know what I mean, in terms of, like, uh, uh, resources and stuff, but I know your name not exactly out there, out there just yet, so let's talk about how you feel of your position in Jersey right now. 
I feel like, well, one, shout out Big CHP, you know what I mean? We taking over. That's that. But moving on from that, um, my name not being out there right now, I feel it's just, it's just like I was talking about earlier, we just need to come together as a community. You know what I mean? I feel like it's, all right, you can hear about me making music, but you won't necessarily rock with me because your man's doing some good things. How are you going to look supporting somebody you don't know rather than supporting somebody you know? You know what I mean? I see those memes on Instagram all the time, like little things like that. It's just like people aren't, I feel like people aren't as supportive as they should be of artists, of new people trying to make music. Like, I feel like I just need to, I need to meet the right people. I need to be in contact with the right people. I need to get out there, man. Now, have you done any performances yet? Um, nah, I got one coming up doing no. Who really read it? Yeah. yeah. That's gonna be an interesting one. I gotta put that on the community calendar. You nervous? What's nah. your what's your what's your what's your what's your thoughts on your first performance? My thoughts on my first performance is I'm about to put on for the team, I'm about to put on for the guys, man. I gotta prove I belong here, you know what I mean? That's a good Came way to go about way. it. Yeah, that's a good way to go about it. Okay. Yeah, Cap, any um any 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 comments? Any 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 uh near closing comments? You happy with the project? <laughs> yeah, I like the project. Is there anything, anything you, 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 you wish you could have changed about the project and stuff like that? I know I got projects sometimes that I'm just like, yo, I wish I, I wish I went back and changed this. Or maybe it's too early to tell because literally fresh off the press today. Oh, well, no, as soon as it dropped, I remixed it again and I dropped it. <laughs> as you should. Uh, Capital B's be on the money, man. As soon as it dropped, I was like, oh, no. This is something I break this track, mm-hmm. so I have to remix it. I actually remixed it today, too. I had to turn up the song. So I was like, no, I can't do that. Yeah. I even noticed he be on it. It's crazy. Yeah, it was that. It was actually one of the people in in, in on the staff on the court that told me about uh, about that infected mushroom uh, plugin. I hope we can get that one day as well. Yeah, that would be lit. Yeah, cause he he was going nuts about it. You know what I mean? So, hell, you know what? I, while you're here, actually, let's um, let's talk about what's your favorite part in the recording process, both of you. This is for both of y'all as engineer and artist. My favorite part of the recording process, honestly, is after everything's recorded, watching him turn it into how it sounds as the final project. You know what I mean? Just watching how everything comes together, watching the different plugins, watching how my like, voice can be manipulated. It's like an orchestra, right? Yeah, it's not <laughs> dope. It's like a symphony. Yeah. It's, like, it's really cool. I like the editing process. Like, when I start mixing and mastering, I hate recording. I don't know why. It's like, because I work with artists that, like, sometimes... They want to be like recorded low or like muted. So I'll be falling asleep during the sessions. <laughs> That's what it is. So I'm just hand- listening to the beat. Like, the beat is going on for like 30 minutes. So you didn't, you still on the same first four bars. So it's like, oh nah, I'm tired. But then when I start mixing again, I'll come alive. That's true. I, you know, keep it a bug. I'll be like that too. Rappers, get your stuff together because I feel like it gives us more time. Just do the stuff that we do best. You feel me? If you burn me out just recording you, you're not gonna get my best mixing you. Yeah. So I I can I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Let's close out on a good note. Um, Seven, you got anything you'd personally like to speak about that you feel like I didn't touch on? Nah, I feel like we covered all the topics. Man, I feel like we covered everything. We covered everything, right? Cap. Okay. You feel like we got it? Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm sure you want to plug in the events. A lot of you rappers need to, like, put your engineers on the cover of your mixtapes because, like, it's really them. You feel me? Like, they doing all the work. Y'all really can't sing like that. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's a lot going on in the industry that people don't know that the engineers and producers do. We really don't get a lot of credit. Yeah. And that is another segment of fact or cap. No, it's like, <laughs> that is definitely a fact. I don't care. I don't care what y'all say. That's true. We got to show love to our engineers, and that's just that's just how you got to go about it. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way around it. A lot of you artists wouldn't sound the way I sound. I know Travis Scott definitely wouldn't sound, but he embraces the fact that he's been heavily processed. How many people go from someone like Ice J.J. Fish to Maxwell? Yeah. <laughs> that's a statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the, there's a <laughs> podcast. Shout out Keep It Basement. They're one, they're, it's actually run by a core alum. Shout out to Mike Sweeney. Um, it's uh, yeah, they shouted me out and they were like, "Yo, he makes trash people sound amazing." And I was just <laughs> like, "Oh, I guess I guess he was there at one of my sessions. I guess you know what I mean." Like, so unfortunately, I I, I trust not all my clients are trash. I love you guys. So, um, let's just play a little image ID. Keep your mic. Keep your head. 
Keep him on, keep him on, keep him on. Can we talk about how that actually that one actually had like that da, 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 melody, but with like an actual trappy 808 behind it? You noticed that? I was like, ooh, you can rap to this. Okay. Yeah. That's a little beat. Capo on the beat. Oh, yeah. That's a remix coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah, that one. Okay. Well, it's 315. Let me see what I feel like playing to. I feel like I'm going to play. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to play my home team real quick. So, yeah, folks, that pretty much about sums up our interview. Uh, Seven, you want to shout anyone out? Um, I want to give a big shout-out again to CHP. I want to shout-out my, you feel me, my manager, my, my engineer, Capo. You feel me, to sing me sound right. I want to shout-out OTL, you feel me, them the guys. They put me on, they put me in the studio. I'm at. I want to shout-out D-Throne, you feel me. It's my best friend. And lastly, I want to shout-out JBK, you know what I mean? Without him, I would have never started recording. And Mom Dukes, you know what I'm saying? Drop me everywhere, fed me everything, bathed me, all that. I'm about to say, you can't forget my new You can't man. do that. No, yeah, you got All right, well, that definitely wraps up the segment now. Seven, it's been a pleasure having you, my boy, until the next project drops. Cap, until the next. Actually, T-Roy's project's coming out soon, right? Yeah, I'm going to be back up here. Yeah, we're going to bring homeboy back. You heard it first. We're we, we going to be back up here. Um, especially now, like I said, I have a specialty, so it's definitely a different vibe now, but... All right, y'all. I'm going to let music play out a little bit, and this show will officially conclude at 11.30. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight on the special edition of Dollar Nair Radio. Stay tuned. Thursdays, uh, you know, my normal time, the rush hour, I call it the Rush Hour Magic segment, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Y'all can hear the latest and greatest of Jersey's best artists um, and just stuff that I personally like hearing coming out of Jersey. You know what I mean? Seven, where could they find you? And they're gonna find me in Love 9, New Brunswick, New Jersey, where I'll always be at, where the hitters be at, man. You know what I'm saying? That's where everybody be making the bangs. At. If you're not there, you're not making them. So where can they find you on social media, family? Instagram. What is your Instagram? G A seven dot O T L. My fault. I'm oh, you, mind. yeah, you, 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 you hyped right now. You yeah, feeling big like, right now. <laughs> you feel me? You feeling big yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the whole goal of this, I'm man. Person, you know what I'm I bet, man. So yeah, look out for uh, the project. Y'all know the vibes. Take it personal. Seven. It's Capo Beats. Dethrone. Y'all know the vibes, man. Dialing that radio, and we out. That was a dope one, right? <laughs> yeah. Lisa, you need a slogan.